Hey guys, my name's Sam and welcome to PrepMedic. In this week's video, we are discussing ketamine. So I've seen a lot of false information when it comes to the medication ketamine. Especially recently, there have been several news organizations that have been releasing stories that involve ketamine administrations and they're largely spreading a lot of false information about this drug. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk about what exactly ketamine is, why we use it in the pre-hospital environment, and then we're gonna go through some myths and try to debunk them one at a time. I'll leave time codes over here so you guys can select exactly what part of this video you want to watch. Obviously, a lot of this video will be geared more towards the lay person, as most EMS providers that have ketamine and use it are well aware of its beneficial effects for patients. The classification of ketamine is actually pretty complicated, but it is oftentimes referred to as a dissociative sedative. It does carry with it a number of properties that make it ideal for the pre-hospital environment because it doesn't have some of the major effects that other medications in similar categories have. So ketamine at very low doses is a very powerful analgesic, which means it treats pain. At higher doses, it actually dissociates somebody and sedates them for certain procedures and in potentially life-threatening situations. So dissociation simply means that there is no connection between their sensory and their brain. So while they'll stay awake, they'll keep their eyes open most of the time, they will not actually be creating any memories or be able to analyze exactly what they're experiencing. This is so powerful that there have been some studies that have come out that have said that ketamine is very good to reducing the rates of PTSD following a traumatic experience. In the pre-hospital environment, ketamine has a plethora of uses and is a very, very versatile medication. So first and foremost, ketamine is oftentimes used to sedate combative patients, patients that are experiencing something called excited delirium, which we will talk about a little bit later in this video. It's also used for procedural sedations, sedation for rapid sequence intubation, that's putting a breathing tube down somebody's throat and making them go to sleep beforehand. It is also used for seizure control, pain management, bronchodilation and severe asthma. And in the hospital setting, it's actually gaining popularity in treating depression. So it has a ton of different uses and there are more being uh, discovered and trialed every day. However, these are kind of the main things that we use it for. Ketamine has several traits that make it ideal for the pre-hospital environment. For starters, it is hemodynamically stable, meaning it raises heart rate, it actually will increase blood pressure slightly, and it does not suppress the respiratory drive. This is supremely important in patients that have other things going on with them. In traumatic experiences especially, you have a high probability of somebody being hypovolemic and having a really low blood pressure. Giving somebody an opiate like fentanyl or morphine for their severe pain isn't really an option because you'll dump their blood pressure further and you threaten to decrease their respiratory drive, which is insanely important in these patients. So ketamine does not offer those side effects. Additionally, ketamine is also a bronchodilator, which means it expands the airway and facilitates air exchange. This is really beneficial in your asthmatic patient, COPD patient, somebody that has a reactive airway disease that you need to either intubate or facilitate that air exchange. So for these patients that are about to be RSI, so have the rapid sequence intubation initiated, we generally give ketamine as an induction agent because that will make our job a lot easier and also make it a lot easier for us to squeeze the bag and get air into their lungs. This medication has a very rapid onset and can be given by almost any route. So IM, IN, IV, IO, orally and inhaled, although inhaling this medication is a little less common in the pre-hospital environment. One other benefit of ketamine is that it's incredibly hard to overdose and cause adverse reactions. There was one study that found that while the general dose for excited delirium is four milligrams per kilograms given IM, there have been documented cases of seven to 15 milligrams per kilograms being administered with a minimal increase in adverse reactions for the patient. Like any medication, ketamine does have a series of side effects and adverse reactions, although they are easily manageable by the paramedic. The most common one cited is going to be a reemergence reaction, which means once the patient starts coming off of ketamine, they can become agitated, have very bad hallucinations. 
This is very easily managed by the paramedic. All you need to do is calm them down, have a nice calm environment, and if it gets really bad, you can give them a small amount of benzodiazepine, which is midazolam or Ativan or diazepam. These medications will calm the patient down and they'll come out of it no problem. This occurs in about 6% of all patients given, given ketamine, so it is relatively rare. The next one that's oftentimes cited in articles not uh, pro-ketamine is going to be your transient apnea. So apnea is when the patient stops breathing. In the case of ketamine, it's actually very rare. About 0.8% of all patients administered ketamine. And generally, the apnea only lasts about a half minute to a minute and a half. Some studies have looked at this and have found that in cases of transient apnea, it does not cause any kind of desaturation and there's been no data to say that it decreases long-term outcomes. Another potential side effect is laryngeal spasm, which is when the vocal cords clamp shut at the back of the throat and it's difficult to facilitate air exchange. Once again, this is transient and it does not last very long at all. It can be easily managed by taking some positive pressure ventilation and just applying a very brief burst of air into the back of the throat. Given a little bit of time, this will ease up and the patient will go back to normal. While there are some other side effects, they are not very common and not something we are seeing in the pre-hospital environment. So with all the benefits of this medication, why is it controversial? There have been several very tragic cases recently in which patients have been administered ketamine and died shortly thereafter. I wanna make it crystal clear that I am not making any political commentary on this video. My only claim in this video is that ketamine is a safe and useful medication. These cases have been attributed to a condition called excited delirium, which is actually not a very well understood condition. This is when the patient, oftentimes either under the influence of a stimulant medication such as meth or cocaine, or with a severe mental illness, has a period where they become severely agitated and very, very confused. These patients are oftentimes a danger to themselves and those around them, and they can exhibit superhuman strength. Most of the deaths from excited delirium happen when the patient is restrained by either law enforcement or EMS. Unfortunately, not restraining these patients is seldom an option, although it is something that is explored in certain situations because they are a direct threat to themselves and those around them. The answer here is pharmacologic intervention. So generally what we try to do is have a brief period of restraint followed by a medication relatively rapidly so we can decrease the amount of time they have any pressure anywhere on their body. Oftentimes in excited delirium, the death is caused by what we believe is essentially a hyperexertion. So somebody is uh, metabolizing a lot, they become very hyperthermic, they become very hot and feverish, and they're exerting themselves far beyond what is normal. This results in cardiac arrest. Like I said, the answer here is to sedate them quickly and have a fast-acting medication. While drugs like benzodiazepines, so your midazolam, diazepam, and Ativan are effective, they're very slow onset, where ketamine is a lot more rapid also with these patients, we do not generally have the chance to get a blood pressure and a full set of vitals on them, so we don't actually know what their hemodynamic state is. Therefore, with the minimal side effects of ketamine, we can give that with a relatively high probability of not causing any other issues down the road. The last part of this video, I want to address a couple myths that I have heard and give you an explanation from an EMS perspective. The first myth I want to address is police tell paramedics to give ketamine. This is absolutely false. Paramedics follow a set of protocols that are outlined by their physician oversight. This is called a medical director. We are not allowed to deviate from this regardless of what law enforcement says. While law enforcement has experienced these cases numerous times and will oftentimes make suggestions because they are familiar with our operations, we will do what's appropriate for the patient every time. The next myth is along the same lines, but a little bit different. That is, paramedics are sedating people so police can arrest them. Once again, this is absolutely false. I can't speak for the rest of the nation, but in my area and everywhere that I've worked, law enforcement has been highly trained in recognizing excited delirium and understand that it is actually a medical issue and not a law enforcement issue. For our safety, they're generally the ones to start taking control of the scene and holding the patient down while we get the medications administered. 
However, once we administer any kind of medication, that, that patient cannot be transported to jail. They must be evaluated at an ER before they can be cleared to go anywhere else. Generally speaking, while law enforcement may come and cite the patient or arrest them after their ER stay, after they're stabilized, if it is purely a psychiatric issue, they're generally going to back off and let the patient go because they understand it was medical and not a criminal issue. The last myth that I want to address and the entire purpose of this video is that ketamine is killing people. We've had several news articles that grossly conflate the number of side effects and adverse reactions from ketamine. These numbers are drawn from our state's registry of this medication. However, they do not take into account that we oftentimes give ketamine with a paralytic for the sole purpose of taking away somebody's drive to breathe so we can drop a breathing tube in and breathe for them in cases where they had respiratory insufficiency. In the case of excited delirium, excited delirium is a life-threatening condition and it's a medical condition that is best handled by a medication such as ketamine. It's hemodynamically stable, it has rapid onset which is key for these patients, and it has been shown to decrease rates of PTSD post-incident because these are very, very traumatic situations for the patient. This is not a political video. I am not taking a political stance in any way, shape, or form, or judging the actions of these two incidences uh, for better or for worse, whether it was appropriate conduct or not. However, ketamine is not the culprit here. I will link all the studies I referenced in this video down below for your perusal. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below, and I will see you next week. Thank you